The purpose of this hearing is to discuss the post-election landscape in the very important country of Pakistan and the future of U.S.-Pakistani relationship, including the future of U.S. security assistance to Pakistan and Pakistan's role in the regional dynamics. I will now recognize myself uh, for opening statement and then recognize Dean Phillips, and we're so grateful to have Dean back. He's been on the uh, traveling around the country visiting and uh, understanding the American people, and, uh, and we just uh, appreciate uh, his uh, passion of service. And, uh, and so, Dean, thank you for coming back. And, uh, and in, indeed, um, Congresswoman Kathy Manning did a really good job as the uh, substitute, and so uh, uh, we're very fortunate. And indeed, it indicates something that people, the American people need to know, and that is that um, Republicans and Democrats can work together. And uh, in fact, on this issue, I'm confident uh, that Republicans and Democrats want what is best for the people of Pakistan. Uh, with that in mind, since the catastrophic withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2021, the region has been stuck in a cycle of instability. Now that instability is further ex exacerbated by the domestic situation uh, within Pakistan, I was born with an appreciation of the people of Pakistan and South Asia. My father had served in the Flying Tigers, the 14th Air Force, in World War II. And he actually arrived in Karachi on his way to serve in Kunming, Chengdu, and Xi'an in China during World War II. But so he had his beginning service right there in Pakistan. He told me how hardworking the people of South Asia are. And when South uh, Asians began buying, uh, purchasing uh, properties uh, of hotels and motels across the state of South Carolina, I let them know that I knew who they were. I knew their reputation of hard work. And so I had the opportunity to represent people of South Asia as they was bought a majority of the hotels and motels, convenience stores uh, across uh, the United States. And they have achieved. South Asians now have a per capita income twice that of the average American. Uh, this is just uh, such a tribute to the hardworking talents of the people of South Asia. And then I also had the opportunity to uh, see the uh, military cooperation between the U.S. Marines and uh, the Pakistani military, I had the opportunity to visit a field hospital in Muzaffarabad uh, several years ago after the earthquake. And it was so inspiring to see uh, female doctors uh, working with women who would uh, only go uh, to a, a female physician. Uh, and while I was there, one of the highlights of my service, uh, a young corporal, uh, Salani, came uh, running up and said, hey, Congressman, I'm here because of you. And I thought, gosh, what did I do wrong to send you to uh, a earthquake troubled area? Well, he identified himself, uh, Corporal Salani, and he said, hey, uh, I, I realized, I remember that our office had expedited his citizenship. Uh, he was a Pakistani American who uh, could serve in the U.S. Marine Corps, be there uh, in a U.S. Marine uniform, speaking Urdu. Uh, how uh, impressive that is, but it, it reinforced to me, again, the uh, positive relationship, the mutually beneficial relationship between the United States and uh, Pakistan. And this was a young Marine who had been trained in the district I represent at Paris Island, South Carolina. And then on my visits to Islamabad, I've been uh, so uh, impressed and inspired by the people that I've had the opportunity to meet, government officials and military. Sadly, uh, part of my visit uh, have been very sad in that I visited a superstar and that is uh, Benazir Bhutto. Uh, it was so impressive to be at her home. Uh, and then tragically, uh, several weeks later, she was assassinated, which is a reminder uh, over and over again, the destabilization that has been so catastrophic for the people of Pakistan. Uh, I know that the people of America want a stable, positive, and democratic uh, Pakistan. Pakistan currently is on the brink of uh, economic catastrophe much of which has been caused by the massive amounts of debt owed to a loan shark. The loan shark is the Chinese Communist Party. We are seeing a cautionary tale play out, where the United States shifted our attention away from Central Asia 
in South Asia from Pakistan, the Chinese Communist Party stepped in to fill the void and in doing so further destabilized the situation. Threats to democracy in Pakistan extend beyond economic threat posed by the Chinese Communist Party presence. Just last month, there were widespread allegations of fraud and interference in the Pakistani elections. This is a critical point in defining the history of Pakistan, where the country must choose between respecting democracy with rule of law or allow a military establishment to continue to control the direction of the government with rule of gun. The Pakistani people deserve to have their voices heard. They deserve democracy and strong institutions. They deserve a government that protects their rights. We have recently seen the threat posed by dictators with rule of gun invading democracy's rule of law. War criminal Putin into Ukraine, the Iranian puppets uh, into Israel, the threats to the people of Taiwan, the actual uh, invasion, sadly, even of the United States on the southern border. We now have uh, recognized that consistently supporting the people of Ukraine and Israel fight back against the malign influence of war criminal Putin and the terrorists supported by the regime in Tehran. We must support the people of Pakistan in their struggle for strong democratic institutions the same way to support the values and American interests which are mutually beneficial to Pakistan and America. I thank Secretary Liu for coming today to discuss the Biden administration's policy toward Pakistan